Well, it's a case of here we go again in Israel. Next month, the country will hold its fourth parliamentary election in two years and its second since the coronavirus pandemic began. The vote has been brought on prematurely because of a seemingly endless political stalemate between longtime Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his centrist coalition partner, Benny Gantz. Let's go live to Jerusalem. I'm, I'm joined by the Washington Institute's Ehud Yari. He's also a frequent visiting expert for the Australia, Israel and Jewish Affairs Council. Ehud, lovely to see you and talk to you again. Now, uh, we, fourth election, has any of the constant deadlock between these two, two parties been resolved? Has the dynamic changed since the last election? Um, I think that the dynamic has changed uh, mainly because uh, Mr. Gantz, the alternative uh, prime minister who was supposed to uh, take uh, Mr. Netanyahu's place as prime minister in November, is no longer a serious player. He would be lucky to uh, cross the threshold of 3.25% in order to have four uh, members of parliament. He is no longer in the race. Between the blocks, between the right-wing block added by Bibi and the center-left uh, block, uh, it's a sort of a tie. Uh, according to the polls, all the polls, by the way, uh, not one of these, not, none of the blocks can reach the magic number of 61 out of 120. So a fifth election, that may happen. <laughs> <laughs> that is that is uh, disturbing to think about. But of course, uh, Gantz's support fell off because he, he went into a coalition with Netanyahu. How has COVID played into uh, Netanyahu's popularity? Um, there are two uh, sides to this coin. On the one hand, I would say the majority of the people think that the government uh, was too busy uh, with political bickering between Mr. Netanyahu and Mr. Gantz and the uh, ultra-religious parties, etc., so that the uh, pandemic was not managed properly, although at the first phase, Israel was far ahead. That's one side of the coin. A lot of criticism of Bibi and the government uh, altogether. The second side of the coin is the success of uh, Israel, again credited to Mr. Netanyahu, in bringing um, here millions and millions of uh, vaccines. We have about 5 million people already vaccinated, uh, including the fellow you are uh, interviewing, two, uh, uh, two jabs. Uh, and the pandemic seems to be, I'm saying it carefully, receding. This may play for Mr. Netanyahu. You're talking about the deadlock again in these two blocks, but an unlikely partner has emerged. Tell us about Mansour Abbas and how he could end up being quite a significant political player. That's very interesting. Thank you for the question. Mr. Mansour Abbas is leader of the um, uh, Islamic uh, movement of the Israeli Arabs. Uh, and he is saying to his uh, former partners in the joint Arab list, which included four different Arab parties, he's saying to them, enough is enough. We need to get something for our voters. And basically he's saying, he, for the right price, in terms of uh, uh, an economic program for the Arab uh, sector, uh, other benefits, etc., I am willing to be in government with Mr. Netanyahu. That's the first time it happens in Israeli politics. And of course, Bibi, the shrewd politician is cultivating it, mm. and he is now courting the Arab vote. Which is remarkable, but what might that then mean for policy, and could that be quite a positive uh, um, step forward? I think that the, uh, an Arab party, or even all of them, joining or supporting a coalition, whether it's Mr. Netanyahu or his rivals, would be a very positive development. Uh, in Israel. What you saw in Israel was that the um, Arab public, the Israeli citizens of Arab origin, over a million people, felt that their leadership was too busy with the issue of a Palestinian state, PLO, yes or no, and not taking care of their own issues. For example, there is a big problem 
of rising crime in the Arab sector. So the Arab voters are saying to their own leaders, that's it, let's start taking care of our own problems and the Palestinians will do whatever is best to, uh, for them. Mm. So you have this almost unbelievable situation in which uh, Mr. Netanyahu is saying, I will have an Arab minister, I will be an ally of the Islamic movement, which was almost outlawed a few years ago. Things are happening here. Remarkable. Very dynamic case. It is very interesting. And tell me too, I mean, you know, we talk about Netanyahu who has been the ultimate political survivor. His corruption charges were yet again delayed because of the election. Do you think he's going to potentially um, dodge them all together? If he, if he successfully pulls together a coalition? Uh, he's in a more uh, con uh, comfortable situation now because the three judges, the District Court of Jerusalem, have decided to start hearing the prosecution witnesses only after the elections. That means there will be nobody understand for the press to cover with all sorts of stories and charges against uh, Mr. Netanyahu. Uh, however, if he manages to form a government, which is 50-50 now, he may try to postpone the trial altogether until after this term is over. He may, tr may try to fire the Attorney General and he may try to um, advance uh, serious reforms in the judicial system. Uh, he doesn't talk much about it, but it's there. Yes, always working in the background. Ehud, great to talk. We'll talk again, no doubt, before the Thank election. You. Thank you. Good night.